In Jesus' name we pray. I will go with Jesus everywhere. No matter the roughness of the road. I must go. I must go. We must go. Everywhere. You must go. Everywhere. We are so grateful to you, our Father. We give thanks to you, the Almighty. Thank you for finding this favor to receive training from you. <laughs> we are very grateful. And I know that since you are the one doing it in Holiness Revival Movement, you will get people perfect. In Jesus' name, Amen. you will perfect people here. Amen. People you will depend upon. People that will be raptured and will make others rapture. I love you. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Whom the Lord loves, he rebukes, reproves, and corrects. Uh, this is the title, Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. To make it plain is whom the Lord loves, he rebukes, reproves, and corrects. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, I read from verse 5. It goes, And ye have forgotten the exhortation who speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God delayed with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, where of all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. 
Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Here the scriptures in the scripture is saying God has spoken over and over that as children to him he will speak to us. He will reprove us. He will rebuke us. He will correct us. In 2 Timothy, we're coming back to this scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. From Genesis to Malachi, you will see the reproofs of God, the corrections of God, privately, publicly, directly, indirectly, by prophecy, revelations, or whichever way, or personal appearance, the Lord has been reproving people, rebuking people. The Lord has been correcting people. So it's not a strange thing. What is going on in our time is not a strange thing. Therefore, don't count it strange. They are for you to lift up the hands that hang down. Yes. They are for you to make sure your limb feet, limb legs, don't turn the other side. Rather, they should be healed. They are for you not to worsen your situation by anger. Worsen your situation by more rebellion. No, that you should be healed. That's the purpose of scripture. And that is what God has been doing till this day. To this morning that you're hearing the word. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Don't despise what you have heard. The chastening of the Lord. The correction of the Lord. The rebuke of the Lord. Don't despise it. In those days, the word of the Lord was precious. In the days of Samuel. Because of backsliding. So this word of God that comes to rebuke and correct is 
very precious in many churches. They can't find it. They can't find it. They are not in the direction God can speak to them. Since the church start, their church started, their denomination started to, to this time, they have never heard the word of the Lord, the prophetic word. In real sense, it's all shams, deceit. But it came to you. This precious thing that is cast in the whole world has come to you. Therefore, don't commonize it. Respect the word of prophecy. Respect the word of rebuke. Respect the word of correction. Respect the reproofs of the Lord. No offend when thou art rebuked of him. Don't say, I'm, uh, it's, uh, I cannot take it. I cannot take. <laughs> Don't replicate Cain's life. Where is Abel, um, Abel your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? Don't do that. That's I don't want to hear. Are you, are, you're disturbing me. Please don't join those people. No faint. No give up. No turn away. They have embarrassed me so I'm leaving. You're leaving to where? The God that embarrasses you is the everlasting God. Now that you are leaving, you are leaving to where? You are living to hell. So don't faint. Don't give up. They call my name. What does that mean? Those in hell now wish they had called their names. That would have brought them to their senses. Then they covered it. He that covered his sins shall not prosper. In places where they cover names of offenders, they will not prosper there. But he that confesseth and forsaketh shall have mercy. There are times we need to call your names. If the Lord says so. How much more when the Lord reveals it in a, in a revelation? You are bigger than that, then you are not a member of this church. No offend! When thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loved, he chasteneth. It's love. Have we not heard of many that these things you are hearing here happen to them over there when they reach? They were disappointed and sent to hell. Are we hearing the name of Idaosa joyfully now? What if he was revealed on earth? Would it have been better? Would it not have been better than what we're hearing about him in the world beyond? Well, the Lord knows what he did with him, how he resisted. But here it is love that exposes public rebuke is better than what? Secret love. Public rebuke is better. For whom the Lord loved, he chasteneth. It. it means the Lord still has hope for bringing your case to the open. He has hope. Let me try this other way. He has been sleeping for too long. I try calling, calling. He's not hearing. Let me hit the door. Fire is on the house. I have called. These people are not hearing. Let me throw a mighty stone on, on top of the building to tear through. It's then they will wake up from deep sleep. It's love. The Lord is taking measures to still get you back. Various measures is love. 
For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. He received that son. You, he, he has that son. He, you gave that son to the teacher to bring him up as an educated child. That's why beating was employed as one of the unwritten subjects of training. So the Lord scourges and his scourging sometimes can be outright cane. You have heard some people say they just saw cane beating them. They never saw a man. Or they even saw a hand. Have you heard so? But sometimes it's not cane. Whichever way scourging comes from the Lord. Take it. If ye endure chastening, God delayed with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? If this approach, hard approach, because this conference will take some hard approach. The special messages you'll be listening to here are going to be hard approach. Yes, he said, if ye endure chastening, God delayed with you as with sons. For whom, what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Which child? And those children that did not submit to the father's chastisement, are they useful? They're the waywards of life. Why should you be a wayward Christian? They don't have the Father's blessing. And the God of heaven also withholds blessing from them because he promised blessing to obedience to parents. Does a father really love a child and so doesn't beat the child? Do Americans the Europeans produce really obedient children. When they don't be as they don't beat their children, no, 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 don't beat them. Do they bring up obedient children? Are they not wayward children that don't know God and not interested even to, to serve Him? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. If your pastor cannot rebuke you, you are angry because the pastor rebukes you, you are a bastard. And as they, and as they are bastards in the society, so are they bastards in the church. They don't have fathers. They don't have mentors. They are bastards. Because they cannot take correction. They cannot take rebuke. They are angry. They are bold-faced. The leader must not rebuke them. Why are you rebuking me? You are a bastard then. That's what the word of God is saying. Even these earthly fathers... Sometimes they rebuke and beat their children even in their innocency. Is that true? What do they do? Do they fight them back because no, I didn't do those things you say. I didn't do, so I, I will give it back to you. Is that what they do? They take it patiently. Because he's a father. Why are you not taking patiently in the church? Because you think that you're righteous. If you're truly a righteous man, you would have known that even Jesus suffered that and he opened not his mouth. That is the world. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live Many of us as 
have testimonies that we obeyed our fathers. Even when they did it wrongly. Even when they did it roughly. Some parents would tie their children with rope. Deny them food. And many others were subjected. How much more this God of eternal life? Now you're not under your father again. You're not under the control of your father. You're big now. Your father is even treating you as a father. When you come home, he can call you, Oh, my father, have you come? Or oh, as a friend now. And it doesn't beat you anymore. You have graduated. But what about the one that will keep you forever? You don't want him to fashion you according to his interest? According to his vision? Then how will he keep you forever? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. God says, if ye, being evil, give good things to your children, how much more will the heavenly father perfect good person? Give good things to them that love him. If earthly parents being evil, chasing children for their pleasure, you did, you did what I don't want, how much more God, how much more will you submit to God who chasing us for our profit. Your father is uh, chastening you for his pleasure. God says it is for your profit. If I don't do this, you will not come to heaven. See what he said here. With that obedience, how are you thinking of heaven? You preach it. Thou that teacheth others. Teacheth thou not yourself? Thou that said, disobedience will take to hell. Knowest not thou that your own disobedience will also take you to hell? That's what he has spoken to us. Is that not love? Is that not even love that preserves you to this time until you hear this? What if you had died before today? It will have been presented to you as one of the reasons why you will be escorted to hell. Yes. That we might be partakers of his holiness. Which means this holy life needs discipline. A place where there is no discipline, there can be no holiness. A ministry having no discipline over the members, don't expect holiness there. Ministers that don't have others appointed by God to administer discipline over them, do they do as they want, forget heaven over them. Hence, then, it's not everybody that can be a general overseer because not everybody has ability to discipline. They do it for other gains, play with people, with sinners among them, sinful elders, sinful leaders. Sinful pastors under them. They have no power to discipline them. No power to rebuke them. Who called you to come and be a general officer? Who asked you to go and start a church? You can't take anybody to heaven. Because of this, your weak life. A lie. Your children are not going to heaven. No discipline. 
That's what he's saying. Now, no, chast no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. You have taken a child to hospital for injection before? Was, he, was the child laughing? When the doctor or the nurse was preparing the needle, was the child singing a song? Eh? What was he doing? Carrying me out of this place with sharp crying. That's what the how discipline is. But you're treating a sickness. You're treating a sickness. You're treating a bad habit. A corrupt habit. That's what you're doing. But it is painful. I stand up there. You stand up and they begin to pour upon your, your, your sins. Them that sin rebuke before all. Pride will come up. Yes. Some, Satan will send some people to you. You have been downgrade, downgraded. Hey, your name is gone forever. He has even entered into internet. What does that mean? Obituary doesn't enter into internet. You want to enter there as an obituary or one that God loves and is reproving that you might not die? Is the people who don't understand that will read that meaning, but to the righteous, God loves you. To have told you this, he loves you. That's what the word of God says. But after war, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness. To whose people? To everybody? No. To them that are exercised in it. It could be that you were even removed as a leader from holiness movement. And you went your own way. You fell. If you had remained, who knows God? Is it not God that brought Nebuchadnezzar back again to the throne? Afterward, it walked a peaceable fruit of righteousness. That is scripture. Unto them that are exercised thereby. Not everybody will take discipline and stay. Many, some will take and go. No, you cannot. They will look for reasons. Which there is no reason you can find on earth. For as a lamb before her shearer was dumb, so he opened not his mouth. That's Jesus. Do you have more righteousness than him? He was laid unto death. Who can declare his generation? He was taken to the cross. But see the fruit that followed. By his righteous service, my, so, my servant shall justify many. The Lord is squeezing something good out of you. By passing, through, passing you through this training. Yes. That is what God wants. Therefore, despise not the corrections, the rebuke, the chastening of the Lord. There is love in his correction, in his reproof, in his chastening, in his rebuke. Uh, but you might accuse somebody, maybe the person is passing it through. Uh, why did he not use, use, use wisdom? Uh, he didn't do it in love. Uh, you know, in fact, he didn't use, thank God he didn't use wisdom so that it should pain you more. Thank God you didn't see love in it so that it should sink into you more. 
and wake you up deeply. Who gives wisdom? Who gives the heart of love? Who gives the atmosphere of love? Who deprived it at that time? Who chose a man that doesn't have it to handle that case? Your case is with the Lord and not with man. Whichever way it is packaged. Endure it. Jesus was handled by the Roman soldiers. It was not some of his disciples chosen to beat him with 39 stripes. 39 stripes. It was Roman soldiers. Is the problem therefore with Roman soldiers or the will of God? Public rebuke is of the Lord. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 22. The Bible says, First Timothy chapter 5 verse 20, please not 22, verse 20. It says, them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. Before all, it will save some. Since God may not follow everyone to rebuke him, he picks one and let others learn from him. Otherwise, Everybody will say, you didn't come to me. That's why, no, you, di you didn't come to me. Uh, you, are, you are guilty because you didn't come to me. No. What I speak to one, I speak to all. So, your case happened to be by public rebuke. Take it so. God chose to make your case public. Take it so. When my wife shared with me the word and the revelation of the Lord this morning, our brother that uh, the Lord rebuked, he called him by name. But the name didn't appear. I felt I should say it. Because it, she covered, sealed it up like this, one of the coordinators. But make it detailed. I decided to make it detail. It's a privilege. So that Satan will not hide anywhere. That which is revealed is light. Darkness flies away. So, that's what God wants us to know. Value correction. The psalmist valued correction, valued rebuke, valued, valued reproof. We are working on our bread industry and our water company. We have been pursuing it for one year now. The NAVDAC people came in to uh, inspect our environment and what we have uh, provided, that's the environment, the amenities we have, how qualified is the place for them to approve bread making. When they came, they looked at our mud oven and laughed. Okay, they saw it in the, on the, in the screen and laughed. He says, is, this one is uh, outdated. Is that what you have? They laughed. Put this in order, put this in order, put this in order, put this in order. That led us to buy more uh, equipment that took us one million six hundred thousand and uh, we went back to show them is it yesterday yesterday La but the one you went now was it yesterday or the day before on wednesday okay on wednesday and they say okay you have passed
we were interested for the correction. What do we do to be perfect? Which way do we do to satisfy you? Now remaining the water, we are still trying to check up. What would they want? What do they need? How do we put the place to ensure we also pass? Amen? You should be asking God, check my life. Examine my life. What is wrong now while I am still alive? You are busy trying to do hypocritical business. No, nobody should, show, should, should, should talk about me. Nobody should point out any error in my life. No, 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 it's a lie, it's a lie. Self-righteousness. Ask for the mind of God. Try me and know my heart. Whether there be any evil way in me. That's the psalmist. He wanted to go to heaven. Now he's there. See what he said here in Psalm 119, verse 67, and then verse 7 to 1. Psalm 119, verse 67, he said, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Verse 7 to 1. It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. Was God wrong to judge me? Was God wrong to shame me? Was God wrong to remove me? Is good he did so, so that I can come to myself and keep his word. Satan took me away. It is good for me that I've been afflicted, so that I can learn the parts of true Christian ministry and make heaven too. So I can upgrade my holiness of life. I was walking by assumption. It's good I was afflicted. It's good I was disciplined. Therefore, brethren, despise the shame because of the glory that shall follow the chastening of the Lord. Despise the shame. Because of the glory that shall follow. Look at it in the book of Hebrews. Chapter 12. Hebrews. Chapter 12. Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and, as, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Something must be done. Despise the shame. Reaction of the flesh. Reaction of the flesh is shame, and it shamed me. A proud man does not want anything that will degrade him. It is a shame to him. Allow that proud man in you to be put to shame. Allow that proud man inside you to be put to shame. That high and great man that is in you does not want to be humbled. Does not want to be belittled. Allow him to be belittled so that you can go to heaven. Because that proud man in you if you keep him and the demands he requires of you, 
you will never go to heaven. The first the thing that began sin was pride. He's the chief face of all sins and he's sitting in you. No, 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 no. Why did they touch me? Why did they mention my name? Why? They don't, know, they don't know that I can. They don't know me. We know you. Satan was the one that gave birth to you. Yes. And you will not go to heaven. We know you pride. You will not go to heaven. Corruption. Push your father down from heaven. And he will never go back there. So, get out of my life. I accept humiliation. God saw you in my life. That's why he sent a messenger to come and remove you from me. That is why this humiliation came to me. I accept it. Because this is the medicine to pride. <laughs> How will it happen? That big you like this. You are moving somewhere. In the, in the presence of people, your leg hit something and you fell. Bah! Hey. No, it's for your good. It's a messenger of humility to remove that proud man from you. When you wake up from that place, you will fall your tail. As dog, a dog will normally do when he notices a higher power. You will now notice that you are nothing. And that is good for you. It's good that I fell. That I might learn the part of humility and see myself that I am nobody. So, for Jesus to endure the cross, he despised the shame. Take that secret. Refuse to be ashamed for any matter spoken or done against you which the flesh is reacting refuse it refuse to be ashamed when you are abused in the public allow that abuse it gives you shame refuse the shame to affect your reaction never I take it. Refuse the reaction of shame. That's what I want to say. Take it that you were rebuked in the public. Take it that it happened to you. Take it. Take it. <laughs> That's what God is teaching. Sometimes beat you with all the money you have. You come to church and they give you a prominent place to sit. When offering back was passing, you don't have you discuss, you check all your pocket, no money is inside. You open your you open your back. Everybody says you are struggling, no, no money is inside. You say, hey, shame is coming on me. Accept that shame. Please accept it. Accept it. It's not that you may know that it's not your money God is looking for. It is you. God sent that message to remove this pride from your life. That it's not you, your money. I'm not looking for yours, but you. Accept that shame. That you didn't have offering to give. Hey, people, look at this big man. Hey, it's, look at this big man. They didn't give offering today. Yes, the big man is receiving a message to, be, to come down and be as you are. Because there are many poor who don't have offering to give in, to give in, a, time, in a day in the old church. He is not bigger than them. It's grace that put him up there and gave him money. So he should not feel that he's higher than them. God wants to preach, it, pre preach to him in a practical sense. God wants to preach to you in a practical sense. Humble and say, Lord, I learn. It's for your perfection. To change your thoughts. Change your thoughts. And as for the glory that will happen when you bear this thing, 
when you submit and bear the bible says in romans chapter 8 verse 18 for, <clears throat> for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. <laughs> the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. What is that? I'm telling you, what is suffering? What is suffering? But the glory that shall be revealed if you bear is hard. Therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, Verse 3. Endure hardness as a good soldier. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Good soldier. Not just a soldier. Good one. That are made to walk on top of their knees for a distance. Maybe a distance of one kilometer. Everybody be on your knees. Be walking with it. It takes the person that can bear. They are training you so you can be rough. You can be used to rough life. When such rough circumstance comes, already your heart has been accustomed to it. Whatever is the situation, it's hard. It gives shame. You will soon become used to it and nothing again will cause shame in your life. I'm telling you, endure hardness. Rebuke. Take it as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Suffering. Take it as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. New food. Take it as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Food has delayed, take it. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ, then nothing will be offending you. This little, little offense is because of the flesh. You have not trained yourself. You have not exercised yourself. That's why you feel offended. And they didn't recognize me. I came they didn't recognize me. In fact, I visited that man's church and he didn't recognize me. If you had trained yourself and preached to yourself that you are nobody, you would have not been thinking like that. They didn't recognize you. By the way, who are you? At, you are nobody now. So they, nobody came in, so nobody was recognized. Is that so? You have trained yourself like that. You have trained yourself. Good soldier. If hardness is not on your way, things are soft, 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 soft. <laughs> it's not easy. It takes grace. Did I say it takes grace. When things are just soft, 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 soft in your life, Our fathers could trek many kilometers in a day. But because of no hardness, vehicles are available, this and that. To carry these people and say, let us trek for one kilometer, some people will sit on the way. Is that so? Say, Kai, no vehicle. All the vehicles in the church, what are they doing with it? <laughs> because you have not been used to this. But the soldiers among us will move. 
because they had learned endurance trek. So allow rough treatment so that you become so used to it, Satan will not come in any way again. That's what the word is saying. Control your tongue in your affliction for your spiritual perfection. In James chapter 1 verse 26, chapter 3 verse 2, 1 verse 26, if any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Chapter 3 verse 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Your tongue. Please, whatever hardship you come into, hold your tongue. Otherwise, whatever you suffer will have no meaning. They slapped you. Good. Are you able to bear it? Yes, that's a virtue. But the tongue, as you be, see that man slapped me up. I didn't know what to do. In fact, that man slapped. See now, see, look at that man. Now. I don't. This man slapped me. The virtue is destroyed. The reward of that suffering is destroyed by your tongue. See how a little matter. See how a great matter. The little tongue kindled. The tongue is a wall of iniquity. Hold your tongue. You are working for Jesus. You are suffering for Jesus. Hold your tongue. Hold your tongue. It's not every time you might even testify. If your flesh is saying, say something so that they can feel. Say something so... Tell your flesh no. If you don't say, how would they know the private thing? When David killed his lion and the bear, was he saying it about... If God wants you to say it, he will create a circumstance where he will take the glory. If he does not create it, don't force it out. It will spoil your reward. See how Jesus demonstrated this in Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. The Bible tells us about how Jesus demonstrated this in verse 7. I read it to verse 12. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So open it not. He opened it not his mouth in full innocency. Oppression was going on against him. He opened not his mouth. Because the tongue will destroy the virtues. Self-praise, self-pity, self-praise, self-pity. This our brother that the Lord reproves. Suppose he didn't give the testimony he gave yesterday. And held his tongue. I trust there should have been no reproof today. Because I am so sure some things might have been exaggerated. The tongue. Now see how it was treated. Care for yourself. 
call your tongue. Bridle your tongue. It's not all good things you have done that we must hear. It's not. Some good things follow after. Yes. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was his stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grieve. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. For, his, for by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he had poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. He qualified for all this by what he suffered and by the silence of his tongue. To, make the, to retain the virtue for reward. Retain the virtue for reward. Say it all. You have received your reward. Don't mind the Pharisees that stand in the public and make vain prayers for to be heart of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have received their reward. The praise, the honor of me, by those words, that's their reward. But you, when you want to pray, enter thou into thy secret. Let your father see you in the secret. Then he will give you reward. It means there are things you do for human praise. You have gotten the reward. There are things you do not mind whether men know it or not. You will receive reward from God. But let the Holy Spirit show you what are these things. Let the Holy Spirit help you to know what, what are the moments you should speak. What are the moments you should not speak. Let the Holy Spirit tell you what time should you make your good public and what time it should be private. Yes. Job said, he knows the way that I take. After he has tried me, passing me through trials, he shall bring me forth as gold. Job 23, verse 10. Yes. But he knew what the way that I take. When he had tried me, I shall come forth as gold. I see all going on as trial from my father to know what I will do, to know what I will say. Abraham, now I know that you love me. Surely in blessing I will bless thee. But it was not easy when it was going on. Even this handwriting of men, the wrath of wicked men, the mistakes of people, whatever happens, the oversight over you, all see them as the trying of the Lord. Why should they read all names? Maybe they are calling the names of coordinators. Uh, this one is here. This one is here. This is the coordinator of this place. When this is the coordinator of this place. And he came to you, they didn't mention your name. They jumped to another. This is the connector. Uh, what did I do? What? Don't allow any thought. Don't think any thought. 
God wants to know what he will do. Simple. Simple like that. Tell yourself very fast. So that Satan will not carry you. I told you that they have been planning against you here. It is you who have not understood. Have you seen it now? You gave, that, you gave chance to Satan. But what if you quickly said, God wants to know what I will do. I will sit down here and say nothing. Before you know it, another person said, you have forgotten somebody. All attention will be on your name. Who is that person? Everybody's attention will be there. And when they will be calling you alone, you will take the glory. Because others, they rush, rush, rush. When they come to you, God prepares. You say, oh, this God, you are great in your wisdom. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Serve the Lord. See everything as coming from him. Evil and good. He allows the evil. He does the good. All are his will for you. Does he not give day and night? Does he not give the sweet and the bitter? See them coming from him. All you need to do. When evil comes, check up whether you have sinned. If you have sinned, repent. If you have not sinned, be expecting he is coming again in the light. In in another good thing is coming. He is preparing you for a promotion. That's how life should be. Yes. If you allow God to pass you through life, others will learn from you. In the book of James, chapter 5. James, chapter 5. I read verse 9 to verse 11. Grush not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience, behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. You see, the, ye have heard of the patience of Job. Why shouldn't God use your name too to edify others? If you are able to endure and to the point that your name is being used to edify others, do you know that the reward is coming to you? The reward of these other people being edified by your example, being edified by your example is going to your file. So stand. Despite all, that your name should be used as an example. Don't fight. No, it cannot happen to me. I, must, I want to show people that uh, you are the one that allowing that person. You are the one that allow, I will not allow him. Is it what? In the truth of Jesus? In the doctrines of righteousness? Or in what God allows on your way? which has nothing to do with righteousness. It has nothing to do with taking you to sin. Then take it. Then we'll be able to say, ah, take it now. This brother took it. And see him now. And if this exhorts another, recovers another, they will go to your eternal file. Ye have seen of the patience of Job. And the end of the law, how he came to reward him. God understands. For your pain, you will be greatly rewarded. You will be greatly rewarded. He will use his handkerchief to wipe away your tears. Therefore, arm yourself. Having come to Christ, having come to the ministry, having come to the holiness ministry, be ready in your family. We shall come there. 
to ensure you are living well with your wife you are living well with your husband in your business we shall come they just get ready for us in every area just be prepared be prepared investigation shall be carried out on you first peter chapter 5 verse 1 and verse 2 chapter 4 rather verse 1 and 2 first peter chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 for as much then as christ had suffered for us in the flesh arm yourselves likewise with the same mind for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his, time, of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Prepare your mind to face anything in this ministry. If they say you have failed, don't struggle don't fight some of you don't know that fighting is worsening your case but it is your character that will cause us to see the virtue the tall lie against you we want number two one we want to know whether you are a liar indeed number two we want to know whether you are not a liar but a true Christian. So we're interested in your reaction. While you're defending yourself, all that interests God is the manner of your heart, the way you are speaking. What scent are you producing? Even if the matter, they really told the lie, when you're defending that, we still want to see the maturity of your life. So, brother, be more interested in the spiritual. Arm yourself. These sufferings in the flesh help to kill sin in our life. So that we can live our lives. Sin has no dominion again. Those things you should have been angry about, you have learned not to be angry about them. You have learned not to be angry about them. If, they, if you have been eating chicken, 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 chicken will not be a special meat again to you. If somebody says, ha, come to my house, my wife, I will make my wife prepare chicken for you. You say, trouble is waiting for me because this chicken, which is chicken, I'm looking for another thing. You are talking about chicken. It's because we are used to chicken. Those who live by the water side and fish constantly don't value the fish. They eat it not with special interest. It's you who come there as a stranger. You, you hear me? So if they are used to beating you, bah, beating you, bah, beating you, bah, beating will mean nothing anymore. You will not be provoked again. You have learned it. Your flesh has adjusted to that. That's why even in beating the child, don't make sure, make sure you don't push the child over the line where beating means nothing again. So, allow those things to come and affect your flesh, affect your personality, to provoke you until you will struggle against them and they will not be meaning anything in your life anymore. You have mastered them. Arm yourself, therefore, to suffer anything. Those who are not used, who have trained themselves in fastings, often. They have trained themselves about food, whether food is there or not. They don't have a problem with food. But others, maybe including some people I'm seeing their faces now, the breakfast we have not yet taken. <laughs> I'm telling you, What's happening? Where did they not suffer? <laughs> it's because you have not learned it. 
But those who are already used to it, in fact, there are people here, they don't even take breakfast until 12, 12 noon. Is that so? So nothing has happened, but to some people, something has happened. Arm yourself. I pray the Lord will take us to the point where nothing affects our life. Rebuke? Yes. Shame? What does that mean? That is it. Arm yourself. Mind not for your name. The Lord will the Lord is going to defend your name and promote it. Don't mind for your name. Don't. In the book of Psalm 34, Psalm 34, I read, Sorry, Psalm 37, not 34. Psalm 37. Verse 3 to verse 8. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Now, read verse 6 together. Let everybody go. One, two, go. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. See light now. Are we seeing everything? Are we seeing everybody? Because we're in the light? Yes. The Lord, those things that brought darkness to your life, those things that brought shame to your name, those things that brought reproach to your name, the Lord will so reverse it that people shall see your name and see righteousness. That judgment that was laid against you, the judged against you, the Lord shall so reverse it that the truth about the matter concerning you shall be as one walking in the noonday. No ambiguity. So have no problem. The lying tongue is but for a moment. All they have used lies on you shall reveal itself tomorrow, reveal themselves tomorrow. So don't bother. That's what the Lord, the Lord would defend it. The Lord will defend it. Therefore, brother, learn this. When the Lord speaks to you, chastises you, take it. Otherwise, he may take you to his severity. He may take it terribly with you. What will you do? If he takes you deeper to handle you, what will you do? Whom will you, who will deliver you? Where will you go to? The severity of the Lord. He did it to Nebuchadnezzar. He sent Daniel to interpret the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. And Daniel said, let me advise you. Stop this wickedness you are doing to people. Nebuchadnezzar didn't hear. One day he was moving on his roof in his building and said, is, that, is this not mighty Babylon that I build with my power and the might of my glory? A voice descended from heaven. Oh. Unto you, Nebuchadnezzar, is this voice that from today, you will become an animal in the bush for seven years. I mean, for how many years? Seven years. Until you come to your senses that the most high rule it in the kingdoms of men. And give it to whom he desires. That moment, 
his understanding changed. The, the heart of a beast was given to him until Nebuchadnezzar was driven to the bush and fulfilled the years, the severity of the law. You want God to go deeper with you? You want to show that you're stubborn? He cursed him and said, Cursed be the earth for you. You shall be a vagabond and a wanderer upon it. Cain said, my punishment is too much. Are you looking for more punishment that you want to rebel? Do you want God to empty you? You want God to sink you to hell? Proud man. That a chastisement come to you instead of taking it, you're murmuring, you're bitter, you say you will spoil things. <laughs> the severity of the Lord. The Bible says, examine yourself as you do in, live in ministry. Don't do things anyhow. Here. Because God's judgment is already going out. And many are being punished. Silently, it's going on. Why is God pouring this punishment upon their family, upon their body, upon their business, upon their deeds, upon their deeds, uh, closing this door there? Do, the Lord is already doing that. For the Bible says, for God had first closed up all the, womb, the wombs of Abim Abimelech's palace because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. He said, this judgment I'm sending to you to bring you to your senses and to full repentance so that you don't go to hell at the end. That's why I send this judgment upon you. Huh? He said that person, you have an adult, I'm a, a fornicator among you like that. And you kept quiet? Now, send out that person from the church. Deliver him to Satan. Let Satan deal with him so that his soul can be here saved in the day of Jesus Christ. Let him go and commit that sin properly outside the church. Satan will handle him terribly. I will make Satan. Is it on the book? And who say, I may hit that fire seven times. That furnace, hit it seven times. How much, will, how much will God treat that person that the church sent away? Proud person. Leave it to the hand of God. He will handle him. If he can come to his senses, he will return to and repent and confess the truth so that when Jesus comes, he too can go to heaven. That's the purpose of the discipline. That's the purpose of the discipline. And really the man in Corinthians, he repented and came back. First Corinthians chapter 5. He came back. And that was it. So don't play with sin. We excommunicate people from the church. Whoever they are. As long as they are not subject to the truth. As long as they have left the part of God. So coordinators... Are you not seeing it coming to everybody? Are you exempted? <laughs> Listen. Whatever money you have that belongs to the church, if you say, ha, ah, touch me now, I will go with the money. I will say, carry it and go. Do you know how much money every president embezzles before he leaves? But the country continues. Tell me that the country continues. Is it money will be bothering? Oh, the house is there. The one I did there. The, this one there. I, in fact, I'm going with it. Go with all. Oh, they have some members who are going to, I will influence them to go with me. Carry them, go. Satan fell with one third of the angels and heaven is still going on. <laughs> eh. It's only Satan is doomed. So we have no business with uh, money or property, material resources. No. The soul of man, the soul of a man. If you will not repent, the danger you will be bringing upon us is more than... Uh, is, it, is this ministry established for, for money? For houses? For riches? 
Did Jesus Christ come to this world purposely because he wants us to be rich and great people? Those are secondary. I come, the Son of Man came to seek and to save those that are lost. That's why the church is established for. So don't, when we are treating you according to scripture, you say, hey, you will, there is no way you can affect us. Not even in convincing people to leave. Those people are not original. That's why they left. In fact, you help us to push the place because they have been smoking wood that have been troubling our eyes. I'm telling you the truth. So we will not be moved. If we have any sorrow, we miss you. Not money, not property. I'm telling you the truth. So humble yourself down. Humble yourself now. Did you give to us? Is there anything you gave to God or God is the one who gave to you? If God gave it to you, he cannot give it again. He cannot give to another. What about the talented people who have died? Talents are finished in the world. What about the gifted people who have died? Gifts of the spirit have vanished from the world. The giver is still alive. He will ever give. A rich man was asked if all these things are carried away, the, all these great riches, how are you going to do? He said, what, what am I going to do? What does it mean? They came from God. He will always bring them. And that is how God does. He renewed the surface of the earth. The things that are lost, war comes upon society, burn down everything, Go back that, to that society, you will see a new society. Houses rising up in beauty. That's God. So, you will do no damage to the church, but to your life. <laughs> you will do no damage. And I who know this, you will not affect me. Because knowledge preserves. Understanding shall keep you. Discretion shall preserve you. You won't do me damage. Not at all. Because I am not a pastor over houses and money in banks, but over sons of men. You can take the whole world, but give me Jesus. I say you can take the whole world, but give me Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Not on him, not on him. God is teaching you obedience through suffering as He perfected His Son. Through suffering. Perfected how? As a human. Because God is perfect already. He's, by these things, you, he allows on your way that brings pains, brings sorrow, brings shame, brings what? He is perfecting your life. He's teaching you how to obey in every circumstance. Abraham, don't kill that child. Now I know that you love me. For this obedience you have done. That's all. As for all the pains, all the shame, the wicked wants to bring upon you, all this name, they are blaspheming there. All of them. See what God says in Isaiah. Isaiah. Chapter 61, verse 7. He says, For your shame ye shall have double. You saw the shame of Job, that even his friends came and put shame upon him. You are a sinner. You are a hypocrite. Look at you, you are still talking. Instead of repenting of your sins, the Lord gave Job double promotion. For your shame. This thing they are saying falsely on you. 
you will have double blessing from God. And in your patience, ye shall preserve your souls. Can you see? In your patience, ye shall preserve your souls. In Luke chapter 21 verse 19. Luke chapter 21 verse 19. Let's read it together, brethren. One, two, go. In your patience, possess ye your souls. Possess ye your money. Is that what the Bible says? In your patience, ye shall possess your house. Is that what the Lord says? In your patience, ye shall possess your position. Is that what the Lord says? Souls. your souls. Mind not them that kill the body and have no power over the soul. Mind him. Fear him rather. That have both power to kill the body and destroy the soul in hell. This soon anger, angry that you are going. Well, you are not the first one. Others have gone. Come. Where are they? Are they doing well? Those who are angry and left, are they doing well? Can you point, point them out? It's not Satan standing at the gate to wait for those who will come out. Listen. In, when the Lord gave us revelation of God speaking to Satan, in 2014, Satan was challenging God concerning Michael Thomas Sambo. He said, hey, you left him there in that, in that your place, holiness of our movement. You left, I, I allow him to go. He wants to come out. Allow him to come out. I will make him curse you with his own mouth. How many of you have listened to this? Exactly. <clears throat> I will make him curse you with his own mouth. Allow him to come out. What happened to him if he had stayed? Will this have been the case with him? What happened to you? Well, I don't know why Jesus closed the door as though as the, as, as the ark of Noah. As he closed the door, Jesus appeared to have, is it appeared to, he has spoken clearly, close the door for you who have come into holiness movement. He said, if anybody leaves this place, forget him. Forget him. If anybody leaves holiness movement, <laughs> he said, don't, don't bother about him again. I'm telling you. So, I don't know. He closed the, the door. And he's not promising you life outside there. He is not promising you his presence after outside there for you to hear. What, what would have really met you to say you want to go? The word of God is lacking. Or even you that are insufficient. You're not practicing it. You're lacking love. You're lacking care, spiritual care. What reason will you give to God? I live. For what? Nothing but your backsliding. And then should Jesus support you there? Should Jesus be on your side? In your patience, possess ye your souls. For his heaven, be patient. Be sober. Don't manifest pride. 
so that you can go to this heaven too. Rise up, brother. Humble yourself and go soberly. Have you seen now that Ahab has changed? Go and tell him, I have also shifted the judgment from his day, from coming in his day. Because I've seen that Ahab is walking now in humility. The word has entered into him. Brother, humble. Sister, humble. Thank you, Jesus. Satan is troubling your mind. Leave! Leave! Rebuke him. Rebuke him. Is there another Jesus? What reason will you give Jesus? How will you tell Jesus that you found it too difficult to practice righteousness in holiness movement? Oh, the word is not there. Will you tell him so? Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. There is love in his correction. He wants to bring you to perfection, to holiness. When he chastens you, that's his aim. The word of God tells us God's children can be corrected, can be rebuked, can be chastised. The psalm is valued it. He said it was good. That I was afflicted. So I can learn the ways of God. My affliction, my judgment, my rebuke came well. Because I really, I, let, I left the path of truth. Despise shame. Don't react because of shame to show that you, you are proud and that, that, no, nobody can bring shame to you. No, take the shame. Humble by it. The future of the man submitted, submissive to discipline, to chastisement, to rebuke is bright. If you say no, then you're a bastard. You have no father. Remove yourself from the control of your flesh. Let your flesh suffer shame. Let your name spread. Even in, uh, of concerning your arrows. Is David's name not in the Bible that he committed immorality with Uriah's wife? Is David in hell now? Better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Seek for a better end. For your shame, if you stand strong, firm in righteousness, if you recover in righteousness, you will have double blessing.
The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com God bless you For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I 